the Giga or Vigo? Which one is better? Is one of them better? Let's find out. So I have had these two raised beds behind me, one of them for two seasons and this one right here for just one season. And uh, I have been kind of looking at them, evaluating them, trying to figure out if there is a real difference between all of these metal manufacturing raised bed garden companies um, because when I got them both in the mail, they seemed to be exactly the same to me. Um, so today we're going to look up close at these beds and also the companies that make them to kind of help you make a decision about which company you want to go for and if you even do want to be buying metal raised beds in the first place. I will tell you right now that raised beds are not the end-all be-all for gardening. Um, as you can see, I have a really large in-ground garden as well as these two raised beds. And that's more of a style choice for me. Um, but if you are thinking about doing a garden, just I don't want you to think that raised beds are your only option. And honestly, depending on your soil quality, in-ground gardening might be the way to go. Okay, so in-ground gardening, let's talk about it. Um, in-ground gardening is good if, well, you, if you have good soil. One of the major reasons that I would recommend raised beds to anybody would be if their soil quality is really poor or if they have a lot of trouble bending over, kneeling, that kind of stuff. Raised beds make gardening super accessible to people with uh, physical disabilities and with poor soil. So if your soil is really rocky, very clay, um, raised beds might be for you, um, sandy even. Um, these, these extremes might make raised beds a more definitive option for you. Um, however, pretty much any soil can be remediated given the right amount of time and enough organic matter. So in cases like that, I wouldn't say it would be impossible to garden without raised beds, but you know, you're going to get faster results by starting with raised beds because you're putting, you know, many inches of good soil on top of whatever poor soil you're starting out with immediately. And you could do this in ground as well. What I did with this garden was I, um, I got all the grass tilled out and put down a layer of compost, like about this much compost over the whole thing, mulched it, and that worked really well for me, even though this is a very heavy clay soil area. However, it was not as heavy clay soil as some of you, especially in my area in the upstate South Carolina and the general south of the United States. Um, if you are on new construction, a house that's been built in like the last 10 years, they scraped all the topsoil off when they were building and you're left with that like really hard clay right beneath your sod and that is really difficult to start with so either you have to have the ability to add a ton of organic matter to garden in ground or you need to have a raised bed and you're still adding material on top of that to start your garden so these are things to think about if you're thinking about starting a garden and whether or not a raised bed is actually going to be a good fit for your situation we should also talk about whether or not metal beds in general are the way to go for you. There are definitely some pros and cons to one versus the other. Um, for example, metal is going to be the most expensive type of raised bed you can get. Um, a just plain wood raised bed is probably one of the cheapest options you can go with. Um, but I will say that cheaper wood will rot pretty quickly and if you're using pressure treated wood it will last longer but I don't necessarily recommend that because that will leach into the soil and uh, therefore into your plants. Now cedar is an untreated option that will last for a pretty long time. Um, in, a, in a damp environment it will last between five and ten years but with a metal raised bed you're looking at something like 20 or more years of not just lasting but being rust free. And I guess I do want to clarify that by the metal lasting 20 or more years without rust, I mean the coated metal of these beds that I'm talking about, just like, like a metal trough or something that you would get from the feed store and perhaps repurpose into a garden bed that definitely will rust within uh, just a couple of years. So um, that's definitely a cheaper option. 
it's not the same as these coated options that will last for a very, very long time. Also, because the way these raised beds are constructed, you can move them. You would have to get the dirt out, move them, and then put some dirt back in them. Um, but they're, they're pretty movable compared to like a wooden raised bed that like, you know, once you've put it there, it will kind of start slowly rotting in place and is going to be like probably not as convenient to move. Plus the longevity of something like that, you might not even need to move it by the time you're thinking about moving it because it just won't be good enough in good enough shape to move. So let's take a look at these two different companies' raised beds and uh, start with, let's start with the similarities and then we'll move on to the differences. So I've got my Vigiga garden bed over here, that's the terraced one, and my Vigo one here. And you can see at first glance they look really similar. They've got that corrugated shape, they've got the bolts, and uh, they also have this rubber topping uh, around the edges so that none of these sharp edges are actually hurting people. There's also generally a more rounded edge on these as well. Both of these are made from super similar materials. They're um, zinc, aluminum, magnesium, um, and they are, the Vigo ones will say that they are a slightly different formulation of that than these other ones, um, and they claim that theirs last longer. Um, however, I was not able to actually access the study from Texas A&M that they claim shows that they're product, their like slightly newer material actually lasts longer and does better in these tests in especially acidic and alkaline environments. Um, I don't really see any reason why they would lie, but you know, it would be nice to actually link to that study and let people read it for themselves instead of asking them to just trust us. If we take a look in here at the inside, this is the Vigo bed. This is the one that I've had longer. Um, you can see that the coating is not coming off at all. This is just a little bit of dirt caked onto it. Um, and these, these bolts are still looking about as good as the day that I put them in. Um, not really any visible wear and tear on this after two years. So that's the Vigo one. This is the Vigiga one. And this one I've had not quite as long. Um, but we can still see bolts down here. A notable difference, you can see those other bolts had uh, nuts that had little caps over the screws and the Vigiga ones do not. They just have regular nuts. Um, we'll see in 10 years if that makes a big difference in the longevity of these two beds. So let's talk price. This one, the, Ve the Vigo one, um, this is the 17 inch nine in one, and it is currently listed at $189.95, so $190 for this. Now at Vegiga, the same size of bed costs about $170. Um, this one that I got over here, uh, I did not pay for. That one was sent to me by the company for free to test out. However, I will let you know right now, I did not sign anything. I did not promise anything to give them a good review. Um, I am here to talk about, honestly, my reviews of both of these because neither one of them is sponsoring me or affiliated with me. Another big difference between the two companies, um, besides the price, is that Vegiga has a lot more like shape options than Vigo does. So in addition to having this terraced shape, um, Vegiga also has uh, more sharply cornered bed options than Vigo does. And if that's something that you really want, then you're only going to be able to get that from Vegiga and not from Vigo. And then if we want to talk about the companies themselves, um, Vigo actually does have a charity program. They donate and give discounted beds to um, like charitable causes. Anyone can go onto their website and apply for this. Um, if you're working with children or just trying to create a, a community garden, do good in the world, they might help you out with that. Um, whereas Vegiga, I didn't see any evidence of, of charitable work. That doesn't necessarily mean they're, they're a bad company by any means, but you know, it is a comparison and something to think about when you're deciding where to put your money. 
something cool about both companies is that they do offer education on their websites for gardeners. Uh, lots of blog posts and different ways to like plant things and manage your garden. And I think that adding that education component is really important um, because making gardening accessible to people as accessible as possible is important. But another difference is um, definitely that Vigo offers this 3D garden planning tool, um, which is pretty cool. It looks really useful for planning out which beds you want and where you're going to put them, how you're going to arrange them, because these are modular things that you can put together into different shapes, um, which is very cool. And Vigica definitely doesn't have a tool like that. After looking at both of these beds and looking through all of this information, if I absolutely had to recommend one over the other, which, you know, I'm a little hesitant to do because they are so very similar and which one you want can depend a lot on like your own personal needs and values. Like if you want those interesting shapes, you're going to have to get them from Vegiga. Um, although the, the Vigo brand looks like it might be just slightly more durable. That being said, I don't have any reason to not recommend either of these brands either. They both seem to be pretty upstanding companies with pretty durable products. And you know, the difference in durability between Vegiga and Vigo it remains to be seen, um, in my opinion, at least for, for my beds. And um, the difference in that durability may or may not actually make a big difference to you. If you have stuck around all the way to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. Let me tell you a little bit more about me. Um, I am a fairly-ish new gardener. I've been gardening for about five years now, pretty like seriously and large scale. Um, and I am out here trying to make content um, mostly for new gardeners talking about kind of the real side of gardening, the good, the bad um, mistakes that I make, how I solve those mistakes, and most of that you will see uh, in my garden tours. Goodness, it did get really loud out here all of a sudden, but I think, I think it's quieting down. Um, anyways, I do recommend that you check out my garden tours if you want to see like a realistic view of what a garden is, all the things that go wrong, and how I kind of manage, especially right now in the, the change of seasons, what I'm putting in and taking out, and even what I do with a lot of the produce that comes out of my garden. So if you're into that, check out this video. And then if you're still here um, and you really like this sweater, this is handmade by me, but uh, I do want to link the creator down below who put up the free tutorial that I used to make this sweater. So if you are a crocheter like me, go check that out. She's pretty cool. Anyways, until next time guys, happy gardening.